Star Wars 7x7 episode 2623. So I talked a little bit about this yesterday in the review of the Life Day Treasury, but I thought that it might deserve a little more attention. And so today we're going to talk about a Coruscant Solstice, which is the High Republic timeline story in the Life Day Treasury. Punch it. Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So A Coruscant Solstice is the only story I feel confident in saying in the Life Day Treasury that is neither told as a legend the way that some of the stories in Myths and Fables and Dark Legends were told and it's also not done in the more contemporary style if you will where we have a story happening in a time frame that we are familiar with like during the Galactic Civil War and characters within that story are talking about some particular legend within their own species, their own culture. In this particular case for A Course on Solstice, it is just a story that takes place at solstice time in the High Republic. And as mentioned previously, or as in yesterday's episode, Stellan Geos, who is one of the Jedi that the High Republic Storytelling Initiative focuses on, has just been elevated to the Jedi Council, and he's very excited about the fact that he gets to spend his first solstice on Coruscant as a member of the High Council, and he's going to be heading to a big party that's happening there, and even Yoda is going to be arriving back from his travels to participate participate in big solstice party gatherings and whatnot and leaders of other religious groups are going to be there and Chancellor Lena So is supposed to be there as well. That suggests that the story is actually taking place in between the events of Light of the Jedi and the Rising Storm because Lena So, this is slightly spoiler territory, but the Rising Storm happened a while back. Lena So was injured and very badly during the events of the Rising Storm and there's no particular reference to her healing or anything like that. And so it suggests that this is taking place before the events of the Rising Storm. And the story goes that Stellan is just enjoying the whole solstice atmosphere when he has a little bit of a nudge in the force of something negative and there's a kid who's pickpocketing people. And so he sees the pickpocket, the pickpocket sees him, and the chase is on. And Stellan's attitude is, yeah, you know, people don't deserve to be pickpocketed at this time of year, let alone any time of year, and I'm going to set it right. But... As he pursues and then loses track of the pickpocket, like he ultimately has to go down into Coruscant's lower levels. And there are a couple of paragraphs that I want to flag in specific from the story for you. When he goes down there, it says, It had been a long time since Stellan had descended into Coruscant's lower levels. Down here, kilometers beneath the surface, there was a little evidence of Solstice cheer. It was cold, bitterly cold, even through Stellan's thick robes. But no light Lights were strung across the broken comm towers and no holiday songs played from the dark corners. And then it goes on to say, Stellan crouched on a weevil encrusted arch watching the people on the thoroughfare below. The fine coats and piled presents of the surface were gone, replaced by sullen faces and threadbare jackets. There was no smell of mickle nuts and nuna rolls, only engine oil and despair. Stellan frowned. The Republic was growing at an incredible rate, stretching out toward distant stars, but there was still so much work to do here at the very heart of the core, where citizens struggled to carve out an existence in the harsh realities of lower level life. And the cover image by Grant Griffin might well be that particular moment of Stellan crouching on the weevil encrusted arch, except for the fact that there's no indication his lightsaber is activated and later in the story, when he finds the pickpocket being mugged by bullies down there, that's when he ignites his lightsaber. So not quite an exact fit, but it looks like that moment is actually what's depicted on the cover of the book. And I suppose I probably should have made this clear before I dived into the storytelling, but this is a full spoiler episode for this particular story. So if you are this far and don't want to hear the rest of it, 
and the discussion thereof, then save this for a later date. But if you're okay with me continuing, then let's continue. So Stellan takes care of the bullies and takes all of the ill-gotten gains away from the pickpocket, but then turns out that the pickpocket was actually only stealing them to be able to pay for a blanket for his grandmother who was shivering cold. And ultimately, Stellan follows the kid to his hovel and gives his robe to the grandmother to keep her warm and says, hey, come with me and we'll go to the temple and we'll get you a good night's sleep and then we'll see about you know what we can do for you when the morning comes. And this is after having a, a brief meal with them. And you know what a beautiful story and the compassion that Stellan shows in it is certainly notable. But I do feel a little grinchy about this one because as I said in yesterday's episode, this story, while heartwarming to be sure, also kind of exposes the rotten heart of the core and of Coruscant. You know, this whole thing about the High Republic era, about it being a wonderful and glorious time in the galaxy, and about how the Chancellor is embarking on these great works that are expanding the influence of the Republic to the Outer Rim, and certainly doing wonderful things, that's absolutely the case. And the Jedi are doing all these great things too, and the galaxy was at relative peace before the Nile and the Drangir got all up in everybody's business <laughs> and whatnot. But the Jedi have been free to pursue other you know, high-minded things, to have wayseekers going out to do what they want to do. But things aren't being taken care of right there at home on Coruscant. And the way the whole High Republic publishing initiative has been pitched to us has been really that it's been about the Jedi. I mean, the phases are named, and of course I'm forgetting the names of the phases right now, but they're all like blab of the Jedi, blah, the Jedi, blah, the Jedi. And it's about, you know, the Jedi's connection to the Force until dot, 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 and Project Luminous when they were teasing that, right? So very much Jedi focused. And although we don't know what the end point of this is, you can kind of imagine the possibility that it has something to do with what Yoda and Mace Windu talk about in the prequel trilogy about the connection to the Force not being as strong as they thought it was and that you know the Sith are able to evade their notice. And maybe this is the start of the degradation of that ability and they just don't realize it until we get down to the prequel trilogy and it becomes that much more acute. But in parallel, it may also be about the decline of the Republic. The High Republic era only lasted for you know, a certain amount of time, and it's certainly not the High Republic era when we see things going on in The Phantom Menace, right? And it does make you wonder how much of this is attributable to the Republic situation, how much the decline of the Jedi is entwined with the decline of the Republic, especially if the Republic is making all of these incredible outreaches to you know, the broader part of the galaxy, but their foundation at home is not being attended to. So yeah, what was supposed to be a touching and compassionate holiday story set in the High Republic era actually seems to be about a lot more for me at least. And I'd love to know if it is for you too. So by all means, chime in wherever you catch this episode that has a comment section or at home base for the show at SW7X7.com. And that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited by their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.